Hello and welcome to part 55 of Let's Play Danganronpa when we left off. We were searching around for everyone else because apparently something bad's gone down. So, there's no one on in the corridor so I might as well just take you straight to the scene of the crime. Seeing as there's no one else's opinions to get, and there's no point me wandering around like an idiot. Huh? The door's unlocked. I thought you had to use your Electro IDs to open this. For investiga investigative purposes, the doors have been unlocked. Please explore to your heart's content. Investigative purposes? I expected as much. Togami? From the way Monokoma was talking, there's no doubt another murder has taken place. No! A change room over there is suspicious. Very suspicious. Wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? Doesn't look like anyone's checked the changing rooms yet. Let's look around the women's room first. Togami was muttering, almost like he was talking to himself. Without waiting for him to respond, for me to respond, he placed his hand on the door to the women's changing rooms. The door slid open without a sound, and time stopped dead in its tracks. Blood bath fever. Huh? It took several moments for my mind to process the scene it was witnessing and accept it as reality. And as soon as it had finished processing... A scream came hurtling from my mouth, entirely of its own will. That was a very short-lived song, wasn't it? Okie dokie then. So it looks like we're on to the, um, Investigative Sages, part two of chapter two. I tried to hold back as hard as I could possibly could, but it was a, a futile effort. Screams burst forth from somewhere deep inside me, like a perpetually erupting geyser. His reaction, however, was al almost the polar opposite of mine. This is curious, wouldn't you agree? Togami was calm, composed, as if talking about something he saw on TV. Look at her. Fujisaki has been crucified. And the bloody writing on the wall. Bloodbath fever? What an excessively cruel way to kill someone. Wouldn't you agree? She's dead. But how could it be anything but cruel? That's not what I'm thinking about. The murder is far too brutally demented to have been committed by an amateur. It's, this isn't like when Sayaka Maizono was murdered in a fit of desperation and self-preservation. It's almost like the killer derived pleasure from killing her, wouldn't you agree? Huh? My, my confused, rattled mind was unable to comprehend what he was trying to say right away, nor was it given time to attempt it. Hey, what's with all the scri- Fujisaki? I love the way that it's like a karma ding dong for the body announcement. We got a corpse here. We'll be holding a class trial pretty soon, so make good use of the time you've got. What was that? Right, you were unconscious when it happened last time. That was a corpse discovery announcement. When three or more people find a dead body, the announcement is triggered to alert the others. Apparently, it's his way of ensuring everyone has a fair chance at finding the killer. A fair chance at finding the culprit? A corpse discovery announcement? Does that mean Fujisaki is... Yes. She's, she's dead. D d d d Before you start howling, how about you go and find the others? It looks like another round is about to begin. Another round of this life and death game of Clue. Doe. Maybe. 
Ishimaru flew out of a changing room. I don't think it took very long for him to find everyone and bring them back, but my sense of time was all out of whack. In any case, the next thing I noticed was an unrestrained fear, anger, and confusion on their faces as they stood around Fujisaki's body, bolted to the floor like so many pillars. Curses! I could not protect her. Yet another soldier has fallen victim. And so it begins again. Whoa. Whoa. What the hell is this? A dream, tis a dream, tis all but a dream. I, I have yet to break free of the womb. I have no recollection of my birth. How obnoxious. So I can't talk to anyone, then? Wait, look at the wall. Is that writing? Writing on the wall? So I have to... You're telling me where to look first, then. Not, like, giving me a choice. The phrase bloodbath fever is written on the... On the blood in... On the wall in blood. It's not a dying message. But it is extremely strange. I feel like I've heard this before somewhere. Bloodbath fever, written in blood. A villainous homicidal maniac with a brutally demented modus operandi. He always leaves a message written in the victim's blood. Bloodbath fever. Chooses his victims at random and without warning. Even the police can't find a pattern. The internet has dubbed the, mis the suspect of these serial murder cases. Genocide a show, dude! Genocide a show, the homicidal maniac who has a public in a fury. His MO is brutal and demented, there are no words to describe how maniacal and perverse he is. So someone mimic Genocide a show's murders? But why? I've a vow that this is the work of a real Genocide a show. The real thing? You mean one of those is Genocide a show? No way! I'm more in awe at how many loose screws one would need to come up with a phrase like bloodbath fever. Indeed, there is nothing more problematic than a mentally unstable killer. Hey! What now? It's Fukuwa! Asahina raised her arm to point at the changing room door. And there stood Fukuwa, having arrived after everyone else. No! Why? Why? Etc. That was very comical. She collapsed, dude, and I did not like the sound she made when she did. Fukua! Asahina rushed over to Fukua's fallen body and began shaking her shoulders. You okay, Fukua? Hang in there! I do seem to recall her mentioning the fact that the sight of blood causes her to pass out. Emophobia. She must be. She must not be able to watch horror movies. For her, some of the best movies are horror movies. Like, I prefer the comedy horrors, as well, to be honest. Like Shaun of the Dead. Isn't this like kind of a problem, dudes? Sleeping outside your rooms against the rules, ain't it? She should be safe. We only prohibit deliberate use of any room to sleep. Well, passing out ain't deliberate, so I'd say we're a-okay here. Fuqua, can you hear me? Hey, is anybody in there? Almost as if in response to her words, Fuqua jumped to her feet. She jumped to her feet, but the strange absurdity of her motion knocked me speechless. She leapt, she leapt straight up while light, still laying down, changed her orientation in the air, and landed on her feet. Her movements were ridiculous and unnatural, like they paid no heed to human anatomy. It looks like she's like bitten her tongue and then like she's like bitten her tongue off and then let it fall out of her mouth. Huh? What? Sorry, sorry, I was so surprised I backed out. <laughs> if that happens, you know, or is it just me? Fuqua, are you alright? Totally fine. Totally fine. Hey, it's a body! Look, it's dead! Yeah, she hit her head pretty bad, dude. The world is made up of fronts and backs. Nine fronts and nine backs. But, like, truths and lies. You're kind of scaring me. And you're not talking like usual, either. 
find out what happens next when Fukuwara isn't talking, usually click the annotation on the top right of a video to go to the next video. To see the previous video, click on the top left. And until next time, folks, see ya.